coming near to the end of our time, so I just have a few more questions for you. Um, it's our understanding that after the Emergencies Act was invoked, um, you were one of the people who had their bank accounts frozen. Is that correct? Yes. Can you tell the Commission what that meant for you and what that was like? Well, uh, my bank accounts were frozen, I believe, on the day I was arrested, on the February 17th. Uh, my corporate accounts, as well as my joint accounts, were frozen for the weekend, unfrozen, I believe, the Monday. Uh, my Toronto Dominion bank account was frozen for upwards of three and a half months. And how did that impact you? I learned how to use cash again. Uh, good, good afternoon, Mr. Barber. I'm uh, going to be asking you questions via Zoom. My name is Eva Krajewska, and I'm counsel to the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Pleased to meet you. Uh, my questions are going to focus on the impact of the orders freezing the bank accounts. So I understand from your earlier evidence that uh, your bank accounts were frozen uh, at uh, during the course of or after the protest. Is that fair? Yes, they were. And can you just please specify for me, was it your personal account that was frozen? So I've got three major accounts that were frozen. One was the corporate account. Uh, the other one was a joint bank account with my, my lovely wife. And the third was Toronto Dominion personal bank account. The personal bank account with Toronto Dominion was closed for roughly three and a half months. I had no access to funds. The other okay. two bank accounts were, uh, they were closed for the weekend. A couple payments went back. I had one NSF, NSF charge, I believe, and uh, the fuel cards got shut off for my drivers, so they weren't very happy. Okay, and uh, so let me just break that down. The fuel cards for your drivers, are those uh, business credit cards? In, in my line of business with the trucking company, we run co uh, card lock cards with different fuel distributors, and I have agreements with those fuel companies to withdraw payments automatically out of my accounts every Sunday. So I'm up on current on my fuel bills. And are those linked to your corporate account then? Yes, they are. And so when the, your corporate account was frozen, then the fuel cards were also inoperative? Yes. Okay, and you said that they were frozen on the Sunday. So is that, uh, would that be the Sunday, the, um, the 20th of February? 20th. They were, would have been frozen on the 17th, I believe. Uh, okay. My bank manager at CIBC explained to me that they were reopened on Monday. She wouldn't give me details. She'd, she'd explained to me that she'd got an email from RCMP saying it was a an illegal freeze or something and, and that they were reopened right away. But Toronto Dominion was a different story. They Toronto Dominion was closed without any excuse. I tried desperately to get a hold of somebody from Toronto Dominion to explain to me why my accounts were frozen. And I, I, I had to receive an explanation. And so with respect to when your accounts were frozen, were they frozen before or after you were arrested? I believe they were frozen on the day of. We weren't, I wasn't really using a debit card. All the stores were closed downtown. So I believe the 17th is when they were, were frozen. Right. And you were informed that they were frozen with respect to your corporate account, your CIBC corporate account. It was someone at CIBC who informed you that they were frozen? I believe so. I don't think I knew that the corporate account was frozen until I didn't have a cell phone, so I couldn't check um, balances or anything until I got back home, I believe. So it was only after the fact when you came home that you learned that it had been frozen by, yes. a, by a letter from CIBC or by a telephone call? That I can't recall. I don't remember if I got much correspondence. I'm personal friends with my banker at CIBC, so she may have sent me a text message. I didn't have a phone, so... I can't recall. And in your TD bank account, how did you learn the personal one? How did you learn that that was frozen? Oh, the debit card wouldn't work. And, and you said that you tried to obtain information from TD as to why it was frozen and why it took so long to reopen? Yes. And was, you did not get, did was, you get a satisfactory answer? No, no, I didn't. I was given a phone number and a first name. And when I called that number, I was uh, just a short answer. I believe I spoke with them 
He called me back once. I kind of made it a point to call him every week to question him on why. And uh, I never did get an, an answer back. And was the first name and phone number that you received, it was someone from uh, TD Bank? It was, yeah. Somebody in Ontario, I believe. His name and was did Jay. you ever receive any correspondence from the, from the RCMP or the OPS with respect to the freezing of your bank accounts? I did not, no. And uh, can, you, can you speak to me first about the, the impact of the freezing of your corporate bank account? What impact did it have on your business? You mentioned the cancellation of the fuel cards. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, cancellation of my fuel cards. So uh, I had to remake the payment. The fuel cards were shut off because of the lack of payment. Uh, there was an NSF charge. Um, one, one that happened down the road a little ways, I applied for a loan and was going to put a significant amount of cash down, like money down on the loan for a, for a deposit. And I was rejected from my financing company because of my, uh, because of the account being frozen, apparently. I don't know. They wouldn't really explain. They just said I was declined the loan. And uh, I have a perfect credit rating. I've never been in trouble with credit. It's been years since I've been in trouble with a credit rating. 20 some plus years, I would say. So I stand good with the banks. That was and with a little respect tough to no, sorry, sir. Uh, with respect to the fuel cards, for how long were your drivers not able to use the fuel cards to supply the vehicles? I would imagine it was a matter of a day or two. I, I was into the bank right away. I was home, so I was able to get into the bank and make the payment right away. And, and fuel companies are good, but they get pretty nervous when a, when a payment gets returned. I'm sure I'm sure everybody does. Um, and sir, with respect to your personal bank account, you said that how how did that impact? Can you provide a little bit more elaboration on how it impacted you? It said you said that you had to use cash. Uh, what can you elaborate on what you you mean by that, or how it, it impacted you to have your personal bank account frozen? Uh, it changes everything you do. You don't realize how much you use the debit card in your pocket. I guess I went back to. As any Canadian, there apparently you keep a small stash of cash for emergencies, and that that got used. Um, yeah, I had to go back to cash for the time being. Thank you, sir. Those are all my questions. Appreciate it, um, Miss uh, Miss Krajuska from the CCLA was asking you about bank accounts that were being frozen, and I, as I understood the TD account you spoke about, you said it had been frozen for three point five months. Yes, sir. Do you know why it was frozen for that long? To this day, I still don't know. I would imagine it had something to do. Miss um, Litch added my name to her Toronto Dominion Bank, where the funds, the GoFundMe funds, went into for the for the GoFundMe, the one million, and then the e-transfer. For transparency, she added myself to her bank account, so everything was out in the open. There was two sets of eyes looking at it. She was the biggest worry for her was that somebody would accuse her of misusing funds which wasn't the case so the td bank account you're referring to that was an account that originally was opened by miss leach i had a personal toronto dominion so all she did was merge the two savings accounts so i could physically see her savings account on my card that's the only thing that i assume had to do with why my bank account was frozen for three and a half months so you had a pre-existing td account yes, and sir. then miss leach added you to the account that she had created for the purposes of getting the gofundme yes. funds yeah, for the purposes of transparency, so that, that there was more eyes on that account than just hers. Um, was your bank account frozen? Yes, sir. Uh, for how, how? Tell me about that. What happened? I understood the government officials stated that they had notified organizers their bank accounts would be frozen. My husband notified me my bank account and his bank account were and our business bank account were frozen and at 10.04 on the 17th is when I received a phone call from a person stating they were from the Royal Bank and that they had frozen my accounts. They had a very nasty exchange with me because they had no right to do so. I told them to open the accounts. They told me to call them when I left Ottawa and I said, you need to open my accounts. We ended the exchange. I realized other people in the room were also getting that same phone call. Whether it was the same person making the phone call, I do not know, but I do know other people in the room 
we're getting the same phone call. And so what happened after that? I had no money. And what did you do? I had to ask for money or let people know that I didn't have any money. And I was lucky enough that two gentlemen uh, on the street actually understood my truck payment was coming due. And I was a few hundred dollars short. I think it was six something I was short. Um, they together collectively sent me enough money to cover my truck payment. Um, a woman by the name of Miss Zena was kind enough to give me a hundred dollars, which helped because it put gas in my car, in my pickup truck to go. And, uh, from then we had to scramble on how we were going to pay for medication for my husband and how we were going to pay the mortgage. And so th this was all while you were still in the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Ottawa area. Yes. Uh, and at some point were your accounts unfrozen? Yes. And when was that? You'd have to ask my husband. He takes care of that. Okay. Oh, good, good evening. I'm going to be asking my questions via Zoom. Can you see me? I can. Perfect. Uh, my name is Eva Krajewska and I'm counsel to the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. And I'm, I just have a few questions with respect to the freezing of your bank accounts. I know you already spoke about this in the examination conducted by Commission Council. Um, and I understand from, your, from that evidence that uh, you learned from a phone call you received from RBC that your bank accounts were frozen on February 17th? That's correct, but it wasn't from RBC. It was actually from a police officer. Oh, okay, I see. So the, the telephone call that you received on that day was from a police officer that your bank accounts were frozen? Yes, when I called it at a later date, it's a police officer. And do you know whether that police officer was a police officer of the Ottawa Police Service, the, the RCMP, or the OPP? I believe he was Toronto Service or from the Toronto area. Okay. And, uh, and the police officer told you that your bank accounts could be unfrozen once you informed them that you left Ottawa. Is that fair? That's what he stated. And did you check at the time that your bank accounts had in fact been frozen? I was already informed prior to his call by my husband. So your husband called you to let you know that he was not able to access your joint bank accounts? His business account, which had my name on it to pay for expenses, his uh, and my joint uh, household expense uh, account, as well as my personal bank accounts uh, were all frozen. He informed me at approximately 8 a.m. Uh, it could be sooner than that. And I got the call at 10.04 by the person claiming to be from the Royal Bank. So they claimed to be from the Royal Bank, but you believe that they were a police officer? Is, am I getting that right? Now I believe they were a police officer because I called the number afterwards. A few months later, not, not directly, and a few months later. A few months, oh, so they left, they, left you with, they left you a telephone number to call back at? No, I screenshotted the message when they called. I screenshotted their phone number. And you called them back later, and then how did they identify themselves when you called back later? I'd have to recall the number. Would you like me to try? No, I, 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 can't, I can't ask you to try that now. I'm just asking, how do you know that when you called back a few le months later that they were a police officer? Because they had no connection with the Royal Bank. When you, when you spoke to them a few months later? I did not speak to them. I called them back and got a message machine. It stated their name and no association with the Royal Bank. So it was not, for example, a, a corporate voicemail where the person would answer, I'm so-and-so at the Royal Bank of Canada at this branch. You're correct. Okay. And um, you said that your bank accounts were frozen for, for a period of time, but you said you don't recall for how long because your husband manages the banking. Is that fair? That's fair, yeah. He, he dealt more with that. I was dealing with, of course, other situations, other people not having money, um, trying to help truckers get home. The, the freezing of the bank accounts created a larger problem than solving the problem. 
Okay. And in terms of the length of the problem, do you know, can you, can you provide your best estimate of whether your bank accounts were frozen for a period of days or whether it was a period of weeks after February 17th? I can't be, I can't nail down a time for that. I know it was a very long time that I did not have access to funds or it felt and that way. And do you know that? Do you know that because by March first you had a mortgage payment due that you weren't able to make? That's right. A friend went and made that that mortgage payment for us. They went and deposited the money for us. So that would be correct. Okay. And so, can you just elaborate for me how, on a personal basis, the freezing of the bank accounts affected you with respect to your your personal bank accounts, other than the a payment of your mortgage? Other than the $100 that was gifted to me by another um, participant, I couldn't put fuel in my pickup truck. I lived nine hours from Ottawa, so I couldn't get home. I couldn't pay for my husband's diabetic medication. We were looking for solutions to that because the money we had, we had to decide what that was going to pay for. The, his, the one unfrozen bank account, which wasn't a main bank account. That's not where we put all our expense money. So my expenses are now he's trying to cover. He's trying to cover his expenses. He's trying to cover his business expenses. He's trying to cover everything out of a very small account that's just meant for him to do with, you know, uh, buy groceries or food in the U.S. Our lifestyle is a little different and it's very hard for people to understand that do not truck. There is usually a joint account to pay things that either husband or wife can do because we never know when we'll be home. Um, my estimate time away is approximately 289 days a year, uh, equivalent to 4.5 trips around the earth in a year. So we need to work together to make sure bills are paid. So if, if I can summarize, the, your access to the joint bank account that you have with your husband is essential to manage your household finances because of the time that you spend away from home. That's correct. And the only bank account that you had access to was the personal bank account of your husband's that was not frozen. I did not have access to that. That is his personal bank account. So he had access to money on the road. I was in Ottawa nine hours from my home and I had access to nothing. Can you, uh, I asked you about your experience personally with respect to the freezing you're, of your personal you're bank. Well, you're well over your time, so you're gonna have to wrap up, please. Okay, uh, yeah, my, so this is my, gonna be my, my last question, and uh, I apologize, Commissioner. Can you just elaborate on how it affected your business to have your business account frozen? How it affected our business? Correct. We ended up having people, um, we actually, I believe, de deferred the payment a month. We had to call and defer the payment. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, thank you, these are my questions. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioner. Eva Krajewska for the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Uh, Mr. Wilson, just briefly, um, were you still on the ground in Ottawa when the uh, financial institution freezing orders started to come into effect? Um, yes, just to be clear, um, there was three instances related to freezing that I was dealing with before, uh, and no random order just off the top of my head. The earliest one was a threat of an interpleader application by TD Bank through their external counsel. The next one was the ex parte order obtained by the Attorney General of Ontario uh, under the criminal code declaring the donations proceeds of crime. Then the next was a um, freeze order uh, of sorts. Uh, um, and then we had the emergency measures, the financial measures. And then after that, we had the Mariva injunction. Okay, I just wanna ask you about the financial measures under the Emergencies Act. Yes. Can you just, uh, did, did people come to you from the Freedom Convoy and ask you for 
um, advice with respect to the orders and relate to you how they were affecting them? And can you just provide a, if they did, could you just provide a summary of how the orders were affecting affecting them if they came to you to speak to, to you about that? Uh, every one of them did in real time and they were finding out at different times. I still remember uh, one of them coming to me and saying, I just got a phone call from my wife. She's at the supermarket. She was with the kids. Grocery cart was full. She went to pay with the debit card. It didn't work. There's a lineup of people. What's going on? Because now the conveyor's full with the next person's groceries. Um, and then she tried her Visa card and her second credit card and none of it worked. And she had to leave the store in great embarrassment and phoned her spouse and said, what is going on? Um, we had other people that were trying to put gas in their vehicles and couldn't. Uh, there was more than one instance where people needed to get prescriptions filled, could not. Um, and then subsequent to that, um, as we worked to get the freezes lifted and reached out to the bank, we developed this template email to write to the bank to ask the bank to respond to us as lawyers, Ms. Chipiak and I. Um, then we have received reports since and to very recently that a number of these people, even though their bank accounts were unfrozen, sorry, Mr. Commissioner, I just realized how fast I was speaking, um, after their accounts were frozen, have been denied credit applications. And I have explained to my clients and others who contacted me that the Canadian Bankers Association representative who testified before the House Committee said that each of these persons will have their accounts, uh, their names marked, flagged for life. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Those are all my questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Morazzo, my name is Eva Krajewska and I'm counsel for the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Um, I want to ask you a few questions with respect to the emergencies orders. Um, after the emergencies, the Federal Emergencies Act was invoked, uh, were any of your personal or corporate bank accounts frozen? Yes, all of my bank accounts, my joint bank accounts with my former spouse uh, were all um, affected. My uh, credit card that was on file with my son's uh, pharmacy were uh, suspended. My uh, former spouse, her credit rating was dropped 109 points. Um, yes, so everything was frozen. Uh, I had access to no money other than cash. And so these were all uh, your personal uh, accounts and not just ones that you hold individually, but also ones that you hold jointly with your yes. child and your former spouse? Yes, they were, uh, they were joint, um, joint, joint accounts were frozen, as well as my, um, my ex-wife's, my, my first wife's um, financial institution reached out and cautioned her that potentially her accounts were going to also be frozen. And I haven't been with her in over a decade. And uh, Mr. Marazzer, for how long were your bank accounts frozen? During the entire time of the Emergency Act. So until the Emergencies Act was revoked? Yes. And my, and, um, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. I was just gonna say that uh, luckily we had cash in the house because my son's heart medication uh, we couldn't purchase it. My account had been frozen. And if we didn't have cash, uh, he wouldn't have been able to get his, his heart medication. He had uh, a month and a half previous had myocarditis and was on um, some pretty uh, intense heart medication. And were you given any information uh, e either from the bank or from the police as to how, you, how you, your bank accounts could be reopened? I was never notified that my bank accounts had been frozen and I was never notified that they would be and I was never notified um, that they were uh, reinstated at no time. So so did you just find out that they were frozen because you could no longer use your, could no your longer, yeah, cards? Could no longer access any uh, of our financial uh, assets at all. And were you... And how did you find out that your bank accounts and assets were unfrozen? Was it just because you were able to use them again? We just 
continue to once we discovered it we would uh check every couple hours to see if uh, we had access to our our own money were you able to access your online banking just to get in you could log in but it, there was a message on it that said um access to your financial whatever was denied okay thank you very much mr Marazzo. thank you thank you thank you commissioner thank you